In today's video, we're gonna take it right to the edge, so to speak. We're gonna do edge finding. We're gonna do flat edge finding, round edge finding, and we're gonna do two or three different techniques for each situation, and they're all relatively cheap. Let's jump into it and I'll show you. Now, this is the first technique that I was ever taught. This is called the paper end mill technique. Now I take a ripped piece of paper, which is approximately three thou thick, and I hold it gently in my thumbs, and then the end mill is gonna pull it out of my thumb, not, not pull my thumb into it. And as I feed it into it, it increases the friction, and then kind of pop goes the weasel, and hopefully you haven't left a mark on there, and you're within about a thou or two of kind of what you're looking for. This technique works reasonably well going on a down feed situation. However, I haven't had a lot of success and generally I don't need to do this because I'm already cutting the top of the work. So I can basically just take a test cut, so to speak, and measure how much I've taken off. But I mean, every situation in machining is different. So every once in a while I use this. Once I do it, I rip the paper. I'm gonna set my actual compound to zero. And then we're going to bring it down and it's only left little tiny marks on there and this is more of a cosmetic mark than anything <laughs> and you probably already thought well why don't i just pull the quill down on it and then turn it on well <laughs> that idea does work but generally in my experience it usually cuts about two or three thou into the work leaving a little you know peck mark or a ring and we're not <laughs> We're not really looking for that, are we? Inversely, we also can do the same technique on the side and it's gonna leave a little cut. No matter how hard you try, it's gonna leave a little cut on the side of it because that's the idea. You're gonna gently feed it in there until you can start seeing it kind of cut away a little bit of material. And hopefully you've only gone maybe two or three thou into the work once again. Now, my most favorite tool out of all, all of my tools is the edge finder. This is a game changer if you've never used one of these before. The small end of that is 200 thou in diameter. So the radius is 100 thou. So basically you gotta run it up to the end of it and then take 100 thou off. You start it with a wobble and then you move it in slowly until the wobble goes away. Then you slow it right down and watch for it to climb the wall of the work. The minute it's climbed the wall of the work, you know that you found the edge. Usually I go back and do it a second time. I zero my work and then I'll move it over that hundred thou. And once again, I'll zero it out. Now I have the center of the quill and no matter what tool bit I put in there, I've got the edge of it. Just for demonstration purposes, I'll turn this around and I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about. See, we found the edge. Now for this tool here, <laughs> the electric edge finder. The idea of this is a current goes from here to over here and when you touch it, it makes a circuit and beep it, beep it goes. The diameter on the ball is also 10 millimeters as well. And we'll touch on that in a second. Come back to me now why I don't use this one. Because when I ordered this, this is a, <laughs> welcome to being in Canada. This is a 20 millimeter shaft and I don't have any RA collets that are 20 millimeter. So when you look at this here, it's got a bit of a spin to it. That's probably why I haven't used it is because of this metric crossover land that I live in. <laughs> but uh, I gave you the premise of how it works. Um, because it's sticking so far out, we know that it can be out as far as 10 thou. Because we know the error and we twist it back and forth, we could get a lot closer. But really, this here is within 2 thou and the paper method is probably within 2 or 3 thou as well. So this really doesn't work for me for the extra expense and then I have to get another collet. So I'm probably gonna stick this back in the box and let it collect dust for a few more years. But under the right conditions, it would be very accurate and it is super fun to use, but I don't once again have all this stuff. So let's just chuck this back in the drawer. <laughs> Mark this up as uh, one day I'll get the right stuff and maybe one day we'll use it properly. Now moving on to the next a lot of times you're going to have to find center of a hole. Now, so long as you don't have a burr and you don't have a chamfer on there, this is relatively easy with the edge finder as well. We're just going to roughly find center by eye and then we're going to go over and find our left edge. Now, we don't have to worry about subtracting the 100 thou here because we're just finding center. 
we just rub it up against the edge, center everything. Then we're gonna troll over to the right hand side and we're gonna do the exact same thing one more time. Except this time we're not gonna zero it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take note of what that number is. And I think in this case, it came out to 744,000. Then we're gonna divide that by two. Easy math here, right? We're gonna divide that by two, move it back to the center, and we're gonna remember that number. Now, we're gonna cruise over to the bottom side of the hole. Now, that number is important because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up against here, we're gonna zero it up against the edge, find the edge, and then we're gonna move it back to that number on the other axis. Or you can cruise all the way to the other side if you think you have an oblong hole and do the exact same thing that we did in the first case scenario. Now, remember in all cases of finding the edge of something, this is all dependent on whether you have a burr or whether you have a bunch of grid in there. Everything's gotta be cleaned up really, really nice. And you also have to get ready to expect small things like maybe there's a taper or that hole's oblong and you might have to compensate for it a little bit, especially if you're doing something say like a cylinder or something. Now, let's run this all through at full speed and see how fast it can go. We'll zero it now. Then we're gonna cruise over to the right hand side, come up here, we're gonna zero it from that 100 thou that we moved in, and then we're gonna find the other edge. Come up, rub up against the edge, rub up together, eh, take a second try at it here, we came in pretty fast, we zero it, we're gonna lift it up, now we're gonna come over that 100 thou, zero it again, presto. See, it's really pretty much that easy. Now, let's take a look at finding center of a small hole with this tool here. And this can also work for pin punched holes as well, but you gotta be really, really careful. You're not pushing too hard on it. The hole that I've got drilled here is roughly about an eighth of an inch. And <laughs> it's just like you would expect. You're just gonna put some downward pressure on it when it's in the hole. You're gonna lock your spindle. And as long as you didn't put too much downward pressure on it, personally, I just turn it on and then now I'm just gonna move it around until I can see it by eye. Now it looks like it's done right now, but you see that little white lip that's kind of ducking around there? You're right there. Now, that means that you haven't exactly found center that hole yet. So what you gotta do is make that little lip go away, and as soon as that shaft looks like it's all one, presto, you've pretty much found the center of that hole. Now, Remember, I'm not recommending anybody follow what I'm doing by touching moving parts and getting wrapped up into machines, but this is just a good basic understanding of how I do stuff in my shop. Let's have a lift off here and see where the accuracy of this can go wrong. Now, there's two ways that this can kind of go wrong for accuracy. The first one is say you had a little burr right on the edge here, just up on the right hand corner. Well that's gonna end up pushing it off a little bit to the right, and you're not gonna find center of that hole. The other problem that you could run into is say you had a chamfer on there, say someone did a center drill or something, and that might not necessarily lead you to the correct hole either. Now let's do some edge finding on some round stuff. Now, just as you probably imagined, this edge finder is gonna work the same on round objects as well. However, the only thing you're gonna to have to watch out for is that you make sure you have that 200 thou surface rubbing on it and not that 500 thou surface rubbing on it. One way you could do it would be to find the edge, find the diameter, move it over 100 thou, zero it, and then move it over to the center. Or really the most easy way to do it is basically find edge on one side, zero it, totally forget about that 100 thou stuff, move over to the other side of the the round object and find the edge there. Then you're gonna have to do some basic high school math, <laughs> which is whatever that number is divided by two, and then wheel it over to that number. <laughs> super simple, super easy. I mean, hey, what could, what could go wrong? I'm laughing actually, because I've actually made that mistake in math like we all have before and totally botched up parts. Now I have an Alexa in my house and I usually ask Alexa what that number is divided by two just to double check my work. 
So this next technique here is pretty much the same with a few differences. Now, that difference that I found is, is because we're cutting a round object. A round object puts seemingly a different pressure on the paper, so I have to hold it a little bit looser and go a little bit slower to get it to grip. The key here is I don't hold that paper too tight where I cut through it or it sucks it in my hand. Now you've found the edge of the round stock. Now if you're trying to find the center, you just take into account the diameter of your cutter, divide it by two, move it over, zero it, and then take into account the diameter of your shafting. So moving on to the next one, speaking of finding centers of shafts, there is this thrifty tool here. Now I'm sure you could build this bad boy, but it's probably cheap enough. Now, the premise of this, I'm gonna show it numerous times because it happens this fast and it's within two or three thou. You just put a bit of gentle pressure down, move a little bit gentle over, releasing a bit of the pressure, and then it finds your center. I mean, it is really this simple. Now, speaking of simple, the balancing ball kind of ruler technique by having a point and then putting a bit of downward pressure and then bringing that ruler up to level is a pretty good technique. That actually got me a lot closer than I expected. I think on average, I did it within about five thou of finding center and uh, I, I'm definitely gonna keep this one for my toolbox for later on. Now, I've got two more specific ones to round shafting. Here's a good example of how I find center on a shaft if I'm cutting a keyway or a flap. This technique here, I actually gotta cut a light mark across the top of it, just a little flat, where I'm gonna line up the teeth of the cutters here. The premise of this idea here is you have a two flute or a four flute cutter with exactly even cutters. This line right here that you've cut is gonna line up with this corner of this tool bit. And then if this corner here lines up with this corner of this tool bit, you're in the center. See, if I had a really, really small piece of steel and a really small cutter, it'd be, your error would be quite a bit more. However, the bigger you get in your diameter and the bigger the cutter you get, the more you're gonna actually see that error in there and you'll be able to correct it back and forth. Now, let's take this bar out of here and flip it around <laughs> and see if we can piss off someone on YouTube. Now, you see, this is the quick and dirty for finding center here. It's the ruler horizontal tech. I don't know, I'm making this up. But this will find you the center. Say you're drilling something for a cotter pin in your drill press. If you scrape that horizontally, it's gonna find it center of the shaft, and then you won't be drilling at cockeyed. This is usually good enough if you're drilling something in a drill press, because drill presses generally aren't that accurate in anyhow. So there's probably a few more techniques out there to do this, and if you have any ideas on what could work better than what you saw here today, I'd like to hear them, throw them in the notes down below. And as always, remember the cost of admission is a big thumbs up and we'll catch you on the next one. Maybe check this video out. All right, we got one here from Hilltop Machine Shop. Let's see what he's got. Thanks a lot, appreciate that, Tom. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, he sent me some cool stuff here. Strat build. Sturette drill chop chart. That'll come in handy. I'm gonna throw that in my vernial calipers. Hilltop Machine Works. That's a cool one. I'm gonna throw that one right up here right now. I think that's, oh, what else is this? Oh, <laughs> oh, cool. This is cool. There we go. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, you should check out his channel. A little beer snuggie here. Appreciate that, man. All right, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Crooked in here. Cool. I like that.